First question is from C Cuff Fitness. What's the difference between lifting steel plates versus bumper plates? Are there advantages and disadvantages to both for lifts such as squats, deadlifts, cleans, etc.? Yeah, you, you know, know, what's, you know I, what's funny about that is you think like, oh, it's ways the same. There's no, but if you really break it down, there's a little bit of a difference. No, right? there's absolutely a little bit of yeah. difference to it. And I also uh, I, I forget, you know, we're we're so more surface uh, area, that's for sure. Well, I, we're we're so into this space for so long that you forget, like if you were entering into, I would ask that question, right? Like, yeah. like why are these people using rubber? You know, these bumper plates that bounce, and why are these other ones using iron? And you know, is there a advantage to or one steel or the other? inserts like the Olympic <clears throat> style? Too. I mean, do, I, I, do you? I mean, I prefer I, I prefer certain ones for certain things. Yeah. Same so here. yeah. So I think I think I think for specific exercises, yeah. uh, ones are more valuable. I like others. I like iron and steel plates for almost all lifts, mainly because I like the feel and the sound, and it's just it's nostalgic for me. But if I'm going to do something off the ground, if I'm going to do something where I'm dropping a weight, for sure, I want bumper plates. But yeah. if it's off the ground, a deadlift, I like bumper plates because even when I put the weight down, I like to have a little bit of bounce because the metal plates are just so jarring. And so loud. I'll tell you the plates I don't like, which I remember. Hexagon plates. Yes. Oh, this fucking pissed me off. every 24-hour fitness, too. It became a big thing in that the whole thing was, oh, they don't roll, you yeah. know? But you do anything off the ground, it is dangerous. You put yeah. a deadlift down with hexagon plates and one side's over here, one side's over there. It, yeah, it definitely throws off your entire trajectory of, of yeah. your, your bar path. Yeah. The, the bumper plates, the other thing I liked about them when they first came out was that the lighter plates were the same size as the heavier <laughs> plates. You know what I mean? So you look strong. Even yeah, I got five plates on the bar, but no, not really. Uh, honestly, I think there's something to that, though, for you know some, especially beginner, intermediate lifters. It's like, it's Psychological you, you just piece. don't feel like such a, a complete wuss. Yeah. You know what's funny, though? How many times have you heard this? I've actually seen memes like this where people are like i don't care what you say the metal plates are heavier than the bumper plates. oh some people swear by they do well i mean you can make a case for like uh old war rubber plates if you're slamming them on the ground they're gonna chip a little bit and the, yeah. the, the the rubber will but i mean what uh, an ounce yeah, <laughs> you know, no. you know the other i don't thing, know the other thing too is with bumper plates you can fit less of them on the bar so like uh like for example if i'm gonna do a deadlift or a hip thrust something where i can use quite a bit of weight I can't go past, I think five yeah. plates. Oh, that's that's the main reason why I like competition plates with the steel inserts instead. So you get sort of that hybrid where you can load. Uh, they stay skinny and they're pretty standardized. So each plate is almost like the same width. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, because it's so annoying if you're trying to do anything from the ground and it's like you get to four of those those bumper uh, yeah. or those rubber plates and it's you're done. Especially the one. Here's the other ones I hate the 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 ones that back in the day the crossfitters would post which were the, they were not just rubber they were huge yeah. like they put like and they were 10 pounds or, or or 15 pounds they were this fat and it's like you know five plates on each side and it's only you know 95 pounds yeah, yeah. i think i because i'm not really i'm not doing a lot of um uh, olympic type of moves like maybe justin might do more of this like I, the only thing i'm really doing off the ground with the the barbell is the deadlift and i actually just like the first one a bumper plate so you could actually do the first one a bumper plate and then the rest iron because the bumper plates are normally a just little, a tad bit bigger yeah and that's all you need so when you slam it it slams the bumper and and you yeah. still get that iron clinging sound that you like you know which i agree i like that same for sound. sure for olympic lifts like i want everything as close to me as possible like yeah. the, with that width it's just so clunky you know to have the, the the weight distributed way outside my body that okay that's a great point right so it will change the feel of the exercise because the weight starts to extend out past uh, with a longer lever. i noticed this longer with squatting lever. so i noticed i like squatting definitely with the skinny iron the skinnier the plate because it is close to my body and when it's all out there it and tends to have this more yeah. kind of bouncy left to right so i do 100 that for squat 100 it's yeah. and it, it, a lot of this is based off of feel like the, okay so yes definitely bumper plates if you're dropping the weights on the floor it's, it's safer it's not gonna break or make a, a crazy amount of noise you yeah, get thrown out of the gym yeah but there is a feel uh, aspect right like uh like for example I, I remember years ago i went to this old iron dungeon gym and it had the and i didn't realize how old this equipment it was until later when i became more educated on what how equipment changed over the years but this place literally had dumbbells and barbells where the dumbbell had the handle and then the ends were round iron balls. Like these must have been dumbbells from the 50s and 60s. And they had barbells that were like that. So mm. 
And I didn't like the feel as much because the weight came out and it just felt different versus when they would have the mm -hmm. the plates or whatever. Then later on, of course, you'd work out with the one with plates. And it was like caveman dumbbells. Yeah, I've seen those. Those are crazy. Really weird. And they had barbells like that. They had this rack with barbells lined I up on it. Those. And they were all big round, you know, cannonball ends yeah. on the barbells. And it was really weird. So old timey. It was and not only was it like that, I remember this too. The handles. So rather than having a oh, uh, thick, right? They're well, huge. well, there was one like that, but they instead of just having a uh, you know the the straight bar all the way across, it was the bar, and then there were like there were like places where you're supposed to put your hands. Hmm. Now, what I didn't like about that was if you went wider or more narrow, it was kind of weird. Mm -hmm. And if like half your hand was on the handle, it wouldn't feel very good. Oh, so yeah. you could tell that they when they created these, they were, they were like the, some of the first weights. You know that they kind of. <laughs> it's put so out there. funny to see, like if you look back, like how much technology has influenced now and, and upgraded a lot of just regular fitness equipment, like even barbells. You know the ones that like spin and the ones that have flex in them, and yep. you know like the Texas bars and some of those Olympic bars now. Like I. I love that. Like I love like how they've innovated like very simple thing like a barbell. Now, do you guys have a favorite uh, types of barbells and dumbbells and and just for yourself? For I sure? really like what were the, what was the brand that um, uh, Ben Pakolsky had at his gym? Oh yeah, I I really like those the, the, those kind of with a, like a chrome chrome weights or whatever. Yeah, those what dumbbells was the, he had. Do you there? Remember those? Yeah. yeah, those dumbbells. They, they really felt cool. really good. Yeah. Do you they remember did. the name of the brand, Doug? I'm looking them up right now. Yeah, he'll he'll let yeah. us know. I, you know what I really like that he had too? So back in the day, the first incline benches that were invented was a bench that you was inclined, up. but you didn't sit on anything. You stood up against it. And the way that people would work out is you would have to clean a weight. So there was no rack, right? So you'd clean the weight and then you'd lay back on this incline, do your press and then come forward. And of course, the limiting factor was like how much you could clean, right? Mm -hmm. Later on, they invented the incline bench that you sat in with the rack. Now, what he had, what Pakulski had, which I love, was a combination of both. Yeah. So you could stand back and have the rack. If you've ever done an incline press where you get to stand and plant your you feet. Put your feet into it. Yeah. Oh, the feeling is so much better. I, I really like it because uh, it's actually, it's really challenging for me. I'm still not good at that technique with really grounding and using my leg my oh. leg drive. I just, I'm still not good at it. Like I'm, I have to actively get into the bench press and really think about loading my legs to, and and using them, or otherwise, I've trained myself for so long of not using my legs in a bench press that that's something where when you're in that, it forces that because you're standing up on them, right? So mm -hmm. they're you're you are already naturally in that position where you know when you do a bench press, your legs are kind of behind wrapped wrap kind of behind you, and you're trying to do that. It just mm -hmm. doesn't feel as, as I don't feel like I can drive as well as I am when I'm standing up. So I really like that's that. What, that's why I like it. You yeah. you you activate your CNS and you're much tighter with that. Is so, that the brand? I think it might be. It's Watson Gym Equipment. Okay. They're yeah. from the UK. Oh, there's I a free right. free plug. Yeah. Free plug for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Send some our way. Yeah, it feels really good. You know, since we're on the topic, I like this is a fun topic for me. Um, machines. Do you guys have a favorite brand of machines that you that you've ever used? Hammer strength. Yeah, like hammer ass. strength. I've really? Always liked it just because it's it's got like the plate loaded, mm -hmm. uh, and um, I just like the different angles they use a lot more so than. Uh, some of the other, but I mean, even there was some at, uh, what was that gym at the cyan gym? Mm. I'm trying to remember. Hoist what is name. really cool too. Um, the, uh, what they've done now with like leverage. I think those are pretty neat. They're interesting. Yeah. The, but I, I still, I, do I so I, I don't necessarily have a favorite brand, but I do have favorite machines within a specific brand. For mm. example, the Nautilus old school Nautilus chain, not cable. It used the chain yeah. pullover machine. I have yet to ever use a pullover machine. That feels like that. And Nautilus had a couple pieces of equipment. They had this really awkward tricep extension machine. You'd have to squeeze in like this and put your elbows on these pads. Uh -huh. And then the top was like this. And it was you also used a chain. But oh my God, it was a it was like simulating a skull crusher. It was a great uh, mm -hmm. tricep exercise. And you won't find them with the chain anymore because I'm sure somebody got their finger in there. Probably lost their hand <laughs> lost their hand at some point. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.